They call it us all this. It's called shuffle right Russell. there. If your cast had a theme song, what would it be? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Good question, Shay. I feel like you must. You've been a DJ answer. for the whole for the whole movie. It's, it's so it's so it's, it's amazing grace. I was just gonna say because you played that so yeah, much. It's, it's yeah, it's it's a, it's amazing grace. It's the grace of everybody here taking on. Uh, this wonderful story, the grace of Brian Stevenson, the grace of Walter McMillan, and all of those guys who maybe they didn't even know that something like this would you know, be in our future. Because what's, what's crazy about it is that at any point in any time, we could feel things slip away from you in a situation that you don't know if you're going to get out of it, but the amazing grace of great people um, is always you know, celebrated. Just Mercy is a movie about Brian Stevenson, who's um, an incredible human being, a defense attorney, who started the EJI, the Equal Justice Initiative, and um, it takes place over a course of uh, several years on one of his most famous cases uh, of a Walter McMillan, a wrongly convicted uh, uh, man of uh, rape and murder, of uh, heinous crimes that he didn't commit. And uh, he gets him exonerated. Um, along the lines, you meet uh, 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 you know, a few inmates that he had to take on uh, early on in his career. and. Uh, yeah, is that a good elevator pitch? Good. Kinda. Good. It was a little, it was a little rough around the edges, but we, we got there. Okay, take it. All right, we got it. Got it. I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> ten, 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 ten. I remember when I learned about it because I was with Destin. We were kind of just talking about the state of the world, and I was talking about just feeling like I wanted to do more, and he was like, oh, you should read this book. And so the book just was hard for me. It just hits in waves of knowing that I needed to finish it and feeling so much pain while reading it, and it really stayed with me. I think it's, especially right now, it's so easy to just get depressed with how, how much problems there are in the world and feel like, oh, there's nothing really I can do, so I'm just not gonna do anything. But the life of Brian Stevenson and what he has proven to me is that we can make a difference. And it's incredible the, the, the amount of change that that one man and the, the team that he has created has done in this country already. Um, and I'm so excited to see what he's gonna do next. When I saw the first picture of Minnie McMillan, I felt like I knew her. I felt like in her I saw my grandmother immediately. And so being from the South, there was an experience that I absolutely understood. So allowing her to live in all of those moments, that's what I was trying to do and to best serve her experience. When I read the script, um, it was so unbelievably humbling to be asked to be a part of this project. And yet the character is really quite an extreme um, person. And so it asked for a level of characterization that is anything but um, humble. <laughs> uh, and so uh, it was really about finding that balance um, to keep the pyrotechnics down, um, but still be honest to who the guy was. And that was a really interesting balance to try and achieve. I don't know, for me, uh, reading up on Anthony, uh, Anthony Ray Hinton, and everything he had to go through for him to you know, just be cutting the grass for his mom one day and then to get picked up and to be accused and put on a death row for a murder he didn't commit. 16 years in, he got a ballistic specialist to prove that he didn't do it and all he had to do was have a, any judge in Alabama look at that report and they didn't for an extra 14 years and he had to lose his mom and, you know, for somebody to have that much taken away, I wanted to give something to him, you know, so it was important for me to embody Anthony and, you know, he's a joyful man. He, he likes, you know, lifting people's spirits, but it's, it's just a certain feeling you get when the, the cell doors close, you know, even on set. It's just that, that, that quiet on set, you know, it's just a, a feeling that blankets over you. And so, you know, you got to harness that and realize what you're there for. One of the lines that resonate with me, I believe you have, is watching a river full of people drown and can't do nothing about it. You know, it's like that kind of attitude towards our justice system on the outside looking in, blatantly 
on how it disrespects, you know, if you're poor and innocent, you're way more guilty than you are if you're rich and guilty, you know what I mean? If you're a teenager being uh, accused of stealing a book bag and you sit in jail for three years without no trial, then you're a college student, rape a girl behind a dumpster and you get six months probation because they don't want to mess up your future. What kind of justice system is that? And hopefully with this movie we can create that kind of dialogue that we can move towards some healing and actually get a real justice system in place. You know?